Jeannie Lynch. Welcome back to another episode of Spiritual Stories Worth Sharing. Two more to go to end the year. A year-long focus of helping and hoping to help spread beautiful light out into the world by sharing spiritual stories. And today's a little different, a little different of a topic. We're going to be talking about food freedom. We're going to be talking about diet mentality. We're going to be talking about self-sabotaging. We're going to be talking about those, the diet culture that's out there. And you're, you're looking at me going, Jean, what does this have to do with spiritual? Okay. Your journey and how you approach your food and the food that approaches you, it's all about nutrients, right? It's all about what we give ourselves and what we allow ourselves to have. It's completely about spirituality. So stay listening. Wendy Taylor is coming in and she has had her own spiritual story through this journey and her business, which I can't wait to share with you. So stay listening. That beautiful spiritual story is coming up next. Wendy. Hi, Jeannie. Yay. So we'll let the audience know whether people are watching this on our YouTube channels or following us on our podcast, right? We met in a podcast group and we'll let the audience know that we scheduled this almost a year ago. Here we are, right? Yeah. COVID. So my first question, just so the audience can get to know you, I did set you up a little bit. I talked about kind of what your platform is and stuff and just let everybody know that all your links are going to be in the description. So don't, you don't need to go slow saying your Gmail, none of that matters, but we are going to get to know you a little bit better. And I think the fun part about this is tying it into this whole idea of a spiritual story worth sharing. You have had a journey through food. And it's this emotion and this beautiful tie to your work, to your life's passion. And as another woman to another woman, I, I'll, I'll be honest, full disclaimer, Wendy's working with me right now, okay? Because we all have issues with food. It doesn't matter what frame we are and because of our past, present, and future, right? So we're going to get into that today. So now that I've laid you up, why don't we ask you the quick question or one of the questions, which is what was going on in your life that kind of started this whole beautiful spiritual story that we're going to be talking about? Okay. What was going on in my life? I know I talk a lot about, um, about my journey and my story on social platforms and on my website. And Jeannie, I don't even know if you have heard the complete story. I want it. I'm a, I'm a registered dietitian and we all went to school to learn how food basically turned into energy in our body. So I learned about biochemistry. I learned a lot about macronutrients and just how foods are broken down. So all that technical stuff, right? That you and I were talking about before we got on. So I knew all the technical stuff, but it wasn't until years later, years, now I'm in my forties, that I began to learn more. I guess it was in my late thirties that I began to learn more about this term intuitive eating. And then later on health at every size, this uh, approach to health that we were never taught in school. So Wendy, was there a backdrop story that made you choose this profession? I mean, like most times you'll hear people say, you know, I struggled with Mm -hmm. something. And so I got into this or I was an athlete and then, you know, so what was your backdrop story that opened you up even to nutrition? So interestingly enough, we're here, um, we're chatting about our spiritual journeys today. And I was brought up, I was raised in a home that was extremely religious. So I, um, I wasn't allowed to explore a lot of things as a child. And I had a lot of viewpoints kind of impressed upon me growing up and literally as I got older as I reached puberty and I noticed that I was changing my body was changing my I also had a mother that was a chronic dieter and struggled with her weight her whole life um I turned to the one thing that I could control and that was food and exercise got it yeah so that really became it kind of it started with And I hear this a lot with the women that I work with, but it's just, it's just a little diet. I'm just going to do this for a little bit. I'm going to lose weight, but it's a slippery slope. And, um, it became just very disordered 
And let's, let's go here too, because here we are, we met on social media, yeah. right? And so take me back to the time frame. Is this the 80s, 90s when, when social media was just starting and Instagram and stuff? So all of a sudden we were a little bit more in front of the camera. I mean, this so was actually before that. Okay. So, uh, so funny. I was talking to my husband this weekend and, and we have really seen social media explode since our late 20s. And so I was, I was in my middle school age, teens, high school was in the nineties. So my mom was a chronic dieter, but she wasn't using apps like we see today. She was using, you know, writing down all her calories. She had all her Weight Watcher trackers, notebooks, and all of the, you know, she had the book on sugar busters and how to. The grapefruit diet was my mom's, right? Yes. Not eat fat. And so we would go through periods and, and it's, it's interesting knowing what I teach women now. And I could see the pattern in my mom. I didn't know it back then, but we would go through these huge swings where we would have like nothing in the house. So for me as a child, I had issues with access to food. And I teach this in my program. Well, one of the very first things you have to do in your mind is allow yourself access to that food for that perspective to shift. So we would have times where there was no access to foods because mom was, on, mom was on this diet. And then we would have the opposite end when mom wasn't on a diet. And then there was like every kind of sweet you could think of in the house. And so nothing was balanced for lack of a better I term. Fascinating. And so I, I'm kind of curious for the audience too, if, if they want to make a comment below, we've all had our own little experience with that. Mine real quick was my mom was brought up in an orphanage and everything was regimented in time, 12 o'clock, six o'clock. And she used to literally say, cause we had seven kids in the family, kitchens closed. So when you talk about not having access, it wasn't that the food wasn't there. It was just that we were not allowed in the kitchen and we had to eat at a certain time. And let me tell you, by the time you got to your meal, you were ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a whole other thing. So let's keep going. So now you're you're you go to school. You've had this whole backdrop story with your mom, and now you decide to go into nutrition. And I'm so curious how you went from the, you know, the licensing and the the, the all that okay, to so. the intuitive side, which is really the spiritual side that you and I are connecting to right now. So take me to that step before we move on. And I say how this changed your life. Take me to the, the finding this book and, and we'll reference the book and stuff. Sure. So I guess when I got out of school and I decided um, in my late thirties, mid to late thirties, I decided to start my own private practice online. I didn't know what a blog was. I didn't, I was learning all of that social media stuff and um, decided to do what we were taught in school. And it was, it was teaching people how to get healthier. And I wasn't taught about weight bias, things like that. What so, is that? I don't know what that means. So health at every size is a resource that goes really into depth on this stuff. There's another book called anti-diet and weight bias is something that, um, the BMI chart, I hear it all the time in the medical world. Yeah. You'll say that weight is equivalent to health and it's not. So you can be healthy at literally any size. And honestly, the BMI chart, this is very interesting. It was developed by a scientist, a mathematician studying white males. <laughs> It wasn't until the pharma industry um, with a weight loss drug got with an insurance company and the CDC and this BMI became a number that said, this number means you're healthy. This number means you're not healthy. Interesting. And so we have, well, we have these thoughts and these patterns and these beliefs around what, what weight means. And as women, through social media, through all the things that, all the external things that we see every day and hear every day, we think that being thin is ideal. And so I, I like to, I like to think of it like, like breeds of dogs, there's chihuahuas, there's Great Danes, there's dachshunds, there's labs, all different body sizes, but they're their healthy dogs. or not, yes, doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with their size. 
Got it. I, I'm also thinking too, you know, you mentioned uh, the, the timing of this as we follow culture, right? Mm -hmm. um, running became the thing, right? Nike, you know, fit for life, the thin body and then tab, mm -hmm. right? We can keep going, right? Fat free, you know, yes. and now we have gluten free. So it's a whole other trend. It is a billion, million, billion dollar industry, right? And we're still riding it. So yes. let's take us today to where you're hoping and getting into your message and getting what your brand is because you're so different. And I'm not dogging anyone else that I've ever talked to that has helped me through my whole healing journey. Um, but your approach was more in alignment with me. So I did seek counsel, as you know, before you to help me get my diet when I was diagnosed with Graves. And I got a phenomenal plan. And I'm, you know, eating all the right foods, supposedly, and the rest of it. And since you and I've been talking, but you and I have been doing some deeper work on the emotional side. And this is that yes. spiritual connection. So let's go to that because I know that's your yummy point. And that's really yeah. why you're different and why I am so interested in having you on my show. So let's go there. How okay. did getting into and leaving the whole, we'll call it the diet mentality, mm -hmm. I have another word for it into this book that we're going to talk about that I own now because of you, the intuitive eating and change your brand. You went from the pantry doctor mm. to ditching diets, right? Mm. So Wendy, take me there. I want to follow your journey. What I noticed a fear around foods. So after you went to this doctor, you got the wonderful plan, you got all this stuff. What happened after that? You develop a fear a fear around foods because when I'm like, okay, cut this out, cut that out, take this supplement, try this powder, what happens? We fall off the wagon, we beat ourselves up and it's like a shame cycle. And then what? We're afraid to talk to our practitioner or we're afraid because we've done something wrong. And so I saw this, this thing that I was contributing to at one point yeah. Basically, what was happening was I'm contributing to this cycle. I'm causing these fears in women. And my outlook changed after I dug into that book, Intuitive Eating, because it's on your shelf. And like I said, later on, help at every size came into play. I began to apply what I was learning in that book with myself, first of all. And I believe that I was intuitive. And I literally, after I read the book, there was this fear that if I, it, there was this fear that it was really hard for me to let go of that pantry doctor. I felt like well, one that was maybe partially, that was my identity, but another, I was like, that's, that's what people that's what people want. That's what people, people buy into. That's buy, what yeah. And so letting go of that was hard and you can't ride the fence. Yeah. But when you, when you get to the other side, it's so, so much freedom, the freedom you feel away from diets. And that's one of your taglines or that's the name of your company now, right? I need for freedom is my program. Got it's it. It's your program. Yeah. Got it. So it changed your life because I had to, you had to change your mentality first, which I really think is hand in hand for what you're saying, right? So then I, my, one of my questions is, you know, how'd you navigate through this process? So you mm -hmm. just told us, so I love that. Um, what's the timeline for this? Is it take, did it take you 10 years to get to the find, Finding Food Freedom piece? And how long have you been doing this aspect with, you know, the, the, a lot of the principles of the book being at the core of your teachings? It's definitely, um, it's had its ups and downs. I would say when I was so excited, when I first began learning this, I wanted to tell everybody about it. And I had, <laughs> there, there's a way that you can meet people where they're at. And I, I don't think I was doing that. I went from a very extreme, you know, I, you know, diet culture, diet heavy to everybody needs to ditch diets today. And while that is the name of my Facebook group, that is the Brand Ditching yeah. Nights Together, we're the food freedom fighters. I realized that not every woman was going to just, actually, there's this thing called 
where you faux think you're giving yourself permission and you're faux doing it, like that's one of the stages. The second piece of the puzzle, the stage, the framework that I developed is called release, where you're releasing things. You're releasing, you're eliminating neg negative self-talk. You're evaluating like the voice in your head that's telling you things. And so it, that phase is really hard and you can kind of faux tell yourself like you're, oh, you, you, you've really truly given yourself permission and all foods can have a place in your life. And then we get to like phase four where we're in repair phase and we're digging into the trauma and the, the emotions and the feelings. And that's when women want to run back to another diet because, because diets are easier than that work that has to transform you to get yeah. you to the other side. So our intuition and listening to our intuition, our body, our gut, Get into the emotional side so my audience can really make a, a, a connection from their heart. What is the three things that you see most often? And we'll just go to women. I'm not that men aren't watching this. I hope they mm -hmm. are. Okay, welcome. Um, we tend to deal with mostly women. So what is the number or the three things that you think women do almost innately, intuitively to themselves that holds them back from being a full expression with food? The number one thing, the number one fear that holds women back is the fear of weight gain. And that's a fear that's deeply rooted in fat phobia and weight bias. And, and that takes some time. It really takes challenging your internal beliefs and your thoughts and where those came from. And so the fear of weight gain is what holds people back from actually tuning into their intuition to move through this process, to get to the other side, to find okay. food freedom. Because ultimately what we're going for is to get out of here, yeah. get out of our heads. And like, I know a lot of your audience will resonate with this getting rooted, getting grounded. That's what we're doing through this process Got is it. getting out of here. When you're on a diet, just think about all the mental space that it takes up. Okay. That's one. Give me two. Okay. So that you're most often dealing with, right? When you start with somebody, it's like, you got to mm -hmm. get over that and give me, give me two more. And I think my audience will connect to all three, but I think letting go of old ways and patterns of eating, letting go of those, of those oh, rules that we have made for ourselves not necessarily that we came up with them, but rules because we were exposed to certain things, maybe through our family or friends and nowadays social media. So we've developed these food rules and we have these ways of eating, of thinking about food that might need to be challenged. Got it. So that beliefs, we limited beliefs, patterns mm -hmm. that aren't even ours that were projected on us. One more. Respecting your body. Mm. Accepting your body or respecting your body? They, they go together. Okay. We work on accepting your body. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of information messaging out there now about loving your body. And I think that that's a hard place to be when you're at the beginning of this process. And my ultimate goal for every woman would be to the point where they can, but I can't even say that I fully love my body <laughs> there might be days when I love certain things about my body or I, I my ultimate goal for women would be to come to a place of body respect so that that's beautiful. that there's a lot of repair work that has to be done when we go into that and it could be a year or two but I encourage women to take as long as they need in this process and compassion we root everything Everything is rooted in compassion. So I'm going to be selfish and ask a question that I don't know the answer to, and I'm going to use your expertise <laughs> on our list of questions, but I have to know this. You talk so often, you hear this, you know, your body only wants what you give it. And, you know, eat intuitively means, you know, to listen to your body. And, you know, and I, I mentioned to you my little craving of peanuts after my ride, you know, I need salt, right? I need fat. 
take me through the fine line between intuitively like the desire of wanting things. Is that intuitive or is that my body calling on junk because I gave it junk yesterday? How do you know what voice to listen to? It is so interesting that I, and not, I'm not calling no judgment here, but you use the term junk and I want to use that as an example because okay. yesterday I was putting together um, a new training and it was all on gentle nutrition, which is the last chapter in the book. So gentle nutrition is left to the end because oftentimes we, we have all these food rules in our head. We, if I gave you nutrition information, you would take it and develop, basically turn intuitive eating into a diet again. So we have this term when we get to the gentle nutrition section. I do think I used to hide this information from people and think, no, they've got to go through the process. But now I'm like, no, you have to tell, you have to share this information with people so that they can go through the process, right? <laughs> so these are things that I've learned along the way. Um, there is a process and it takes a while, some longer than shorter than others, but there's gentle nutrition. And in gentle nutrition, we learn about nutrition guidelines and how to apply good, solid nutrition back into a healthy relationship with food. And what does that look like? And then there's this term play food that's brought up. And I don't like the word junk. Okay. It talks about this in the book. That's almost like a term that we've heard or we've come up with that, that elevates this food over this food. So whether it's apple or apple pie, it's, 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 a, it's just food, right? Okay. But we can choose to have play food or we can choose to have the nutritious food. And it really goes deep into our feelings and how we, how, how food makes us feel. And then there's this like, hub of the wheel of intuitive eating and the hub is called the satisfaction factor okay. it is my favorite intuitive eating principle it's chapter five i think okay. <laughs> but what that is is it's mental it's it's a mental piece so how often had a time how many times have you you eaten the grilled chicken salad and you told yourself i've had enough physically i'm not hungry i'm physically not hungry but i keep wanting something so maybe you need a little play food in your life. So maybe, maybe you need some peanut M&Ms and then you're good. But how often time, how many times do you eat the grilled chicken salad, then eat the rice cake with almond butter, then eat the <laughs> bowl of, of ice cream that's no fat, high protein. And then you've eaten a whole pint of that halo top. And then, so you've done all these things and you still aren't satisfying that mental craving, the satisfaction factor. Some meals just need satisfaction factor. So we talk a lot about in that portion of our work together, we talk about choices Got it. and food and body congruence comes into play. And this is how will this choice affect me in the way that I feel? And it might be that, you know, that ice cream doesn't settle that well with you, but maybe one day you just want it. And Got that's it. okay. But you just gave me permission. That's <laughs> right. Hey, everybody, go to the cupboard and get what you want and play. <laughs> I love it. Permission. You'll, have, you'll see a wide, wide, wide variety of foods in my pantry. And it didn't used to be that way. I could ask you what this taught you about yourself. It's such a great question. So why don't we go there? Here we are. You're having your own exploration of changing the way you did your business and your training and then modeling that down to the people you wanted to serve. Um, what did it teach you about yourself? I think for me, it was seeing the effects of my work and the things that I was trying to do. I'm talking from pantry doctor. I saw how unrealistic my expectations were and how it was not translating to lifestyle changes, at least not for long. And so I saw that that traditional approach did not work and I wanted to do something about it. I realized that all of those external things were not helping others in the way that I wanted to. And I wanted to focus more on internal 
things and oh helping women tune back into their body. And, and I didn't know how at first, but I, I knew that there was something that was off with what I was doing and women couldn't trust their body. So here's my favorite question on these interviews. I just loved asking this one. If you knew then what you know now, you would have. Mm. Okay. Say this. If I'd known then what I knew now, I would have told myself, I would have, I wish I could have learned, I guess I'm trying to say, I wish I could have learned that trauma has a huge experience on our relationship with food. So trauma and shame. And I think that's what yeah. every woman, I want every woman to understand. There was a lot of shame around anything that I said I wanted to do or be when I grew up. I was just like, you know, this little girl that wanted to like do all the things, but I was always shut down. And so um, if I could go back and like change all of that, that's the one thing I would do. And I'm connecting to your um, talk about trauma. I think we shared mm -hmm. offline that, you know, years ago I did the bodybuilding competitive thing and the trauma that I went through and getting ready to show. Yeah. <laughs> and the, you know, that what you have, your body goes into this place where it knows it needs fat. So you literally do go crazy and mm -hmm. not dogging the industry of weightlifters out there. Okay. But from my experience, it was the most unhealthy thing I've ever put my body through 20 years later. I'm still feeling like you're not taking chips away from me again. Like, Exactly. You know what I mean? I am not going without. And so to your point, the trauma of those things, and you know, we could go on and on about that. Okay. So we're kind of wrapping up okay. so people can get to their life and go have their fun food. That was me kidding. Um, have I missed anything, you know, when you were thinking about the interview and your platform? I, I do, before we get to that too, I want to make sure you tell who you're not for. Um, you've, you've said this once before and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Like the people who might have an eating disorder or, you know, and tell yeah. me who this program is not for before you tell me what I've missed or you've missed. Working with me, I don't work with people that are currently in an eating disorder, but I can get them in touch with the dietitian that that is. So if you are currently battling an eating disorder, you really need to work with a team of professionals. You need to work with a dietitian, a doctor, a psychologist, so that they can get you into a place of recovery. And from that point, that's where I work with a lot of people that have are in recovery and they're working on their relationship with food. Got it. So, okay. So we're going to end with what is your beautiful inspiration? You might've already said it, but you can say it again. What is your beautiful inspirational message out to um, people right now with where we are with COVID? You know, and I know this will push a button with you. The COVID-19 is the 19 mm -hmm. pounds we've all gained, right? So take me to that inspirational message of where we are in the world right now. I love how you did that, Jeannie, because I had something planned. And if someone wants to contact me, I would love to tell them, you know, about that, but <laughs> you have helped me like you just took it in a different direction for me. And, and I think with everything we've said and with COVID-19, um, with the things that I see women going through, my message to them would be that no one knows your body better than you. You are the expert of your body. Your body loves you. Your body was created to help you. Your body's not trying to, if there's a woman out there that thinks like their body is against them, your body loves you. And you can see that in those things, those gut and hormonal disbalances, you can see that's just your body trying to compensate. Your body wants balance. It's fighting it's for it constantly. It. So what I want to do is help support that, Got support it. that, that your body's trying to do. Got it. I love that. I have so enjoyed our time today. So guess what? Is we're, it heading, over? We're, home. <laughs> we're heading into rapid fire, which is like, for oh, rapid fire. fire. Okay. Music's <laughs> kicking up. Special effects are taking place. Thank you for your time today, by the way. I truly do appreciate our friendship that we've, yeah. that we've sparred and gotten to. And I, I appreciate you I'm in my so life. I'm so glad that you're in my life. Yes. 
So here we go. What is your favorite spiritual book that you would like to make sure gets referred out to people? Intuitive Eating is your food relationship Bible. <laughs> Love it. I will put the link to that book below and tell them it's, it's, it is a great book. Okay. If the world was going to change, what does the world need to change, Wendy? I think, you know, you sent a video out this morning and you shared it in our Facebook group uh, last week. And I think the world needs a lot of love right now. And right now our bodies and us, we need a lot of love. Our bodies need a lot of love. So love on. If, if you've gained 19 pounds, that is fine. There are situations and there are times in our life when our weight goes up and our weight goes down and it's okay. Um, your life lesson. We all come here with certain lessons to learn. What do you think yours has been? <laughs> I think that, I guess, for my whole life, I've probably been wanting to be heard, and I didn't know what my message was. And I feel like I found that in intuitive eating, and that's what I want. One, I want to do is. I mean. <laughs> what do you love about yourself, Wendy? and be authentic and tell them the truth and not just, you know, go with the flow of everything else out there. Um, last question before we wrap up and say thank you so much today is what are you doing when you're experiencing joy? Okay, so for me this weekend, it was baking apple bread, lighting a Thanksgiving candle from Bath and Body Works, playing with my kitties and riding bikes outside with my husband. Oh, I love it. Hey, whether people have watched this on YouTube, on our YouTube channels, or followed this on our podcast, the Intuitive Mindset Podcast with Jeannie Lynch, I truly do appreciate the audience. Thank you, Wendy, for your time today. And all right, everybody, we'll see you next video.